Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 12 of my code refactoring tutorial. Today I'm going to cover something that sounds terribly complicated, but it absolutely isn't. I'm doing this tutorial both to show you something you're going to use all of the time, and at the same time get rid of some jargon, teach you some jargon, whatever you want to say. But either way, this is what we're going to do in this tutorial. We're going to eliminate large accumulation methods by extracting methods and using a collecting parameter. Sounds so complicated, but it isn't. It's so uncomplicated, I'm going to jump right into the code. So let's get into it. Okay, so all this code is available in the link underneath the video, and this guy right here is what we call an accumulation method. And this is from the last part of the tutorial. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to take this accumulation method, which is two string, and we are going to break it into a whole bunch of other pieces. Now large methods that accumulate a lot of information like we've talked about before into a single variable like item information that you see right here are very very common. Now like we've learned before because large methods complicate code what we're going to do here is we'll extract all that code out into many different methods. Now the only problem here is the string data type, which item information is, won't allow me to accumulate information across methods. So what I'm going to have to do is instead use a string buffer, which will. And that string buffer is known as a collecting parameter. And it's going to be passed from method to method while collecting information that we need just like item information is collecting all that information in this one method. So this right here is an accumulation method. Why? Because it is going to slowly build the information or accumulate information into this variable right here. Instead, we're going to use a string buffer and it's going to collect information in exactly the same way, except it's going to collect it as we move from method to method. And that string buffer is known as a collecting parameter. So let's just start creating this code and changing this long method into something that is much more manageable. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to need our collecting parameter string buffer, and I'm going to call it item info for now here, new string buffer, and there we go. So this is going to be the guy that's going to collect information from now on. Then what am I going to do here? Well, I'm going to take all of the individual pieces of this method and break it into a bunch of different methods. So what do we want to do? Well, on this line, we see we're adding the item name and a new line character, not exactly a lot of information. Then we see down here that we are cycling through the hash map, which is going to contain all the information for this item right here and we're going to be storing that inside of item information as well right like that so I would like to extract this information out of this big giant method and throw it into its own method because I think that makes more sense and the method I'm going to create is going to be called add item information and what am I going to pass it I'm going to pass it item info right like that and before I go and create all of that, I want to test to see what my output looks like. It's going to be exactly the same as from last time. And there you can see this is what's going on. It's printing out all sorts of information that we have stored in our tree structure. Okay, so if any of this is confusing you, it's because you haven't seen part 11. Go watch that first. Okay, so that's what we currently have. And of course, we want exactly the same output, except we want our code to be more readable. So that means I'm going to have to go down to item information. Actually, it's just copy this whole guy and let's create that method. So we'll just come right down here, right where this ends. And here we're going to go private void add item information. And this is going to be a string buffer that is going to be passed into this guy. And then inside of here, we're just going to extract what was already up inside of this. So we're just going to literally cut it right out of there. And there we go. And then come down inside of here and paste that inside of there. And then what we're going to need to do is instead take item info and put that right here paste that in and since we're working with a string buffer we're going to have to put append inside of here instead of the old way of doing things so there we go got that saved and then we're going to have to do exactly the same thing here paste that there paste that there there's a sort of a review on how to extract methods as well and let's file save that and then let's go up here and look and see how we're going to extract other information okay so the very next thing that we're going to do is we're going to cycle through and see if we have any children elements and then we're going to return item information. Well, this is just one thing going on here. So I'm just going to want to take 
this information and extract it to another method. Now there's only one thing here that looks a little bit crazy that we're going to have to think about and that is the fact that this is a recursive call because this node down here recursively calls to string which is the method that I am in right now. I can't pass a parameter like I did here where I'm passing the string buffer. So that means I'm going to need to create another method to handle what toString used to do, but that method is going to differ from toString in that it will accept the string buffer passed as a parameter. So how are we going to do this? Well, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new method that's going to be called add item info and children because here I'm adding item info and here I'm adding children and added item information right there is going to get moved to the add item info and children method that I'm going to create below. So let's just come down here and let's just do that because that name makes more sense. So we're going to go private void add item info and children and this is going to accept a string buffer and then I'm going to go item info give it a name and then inside of this I'm then going to call add item information this guy right here so copy that paste that inside of there we're going to change that in a second of course change this to just item info like I said before we couldn't do this with a string so that's why we're using string buffers in this situation feel free to leave any questions below I'll be happy to answer them then what we're going to do is we're going to create another method that is going to call or that is going to be called add children information because that is what it's going to do and it's going to add additional information to that guy so that means i need to create a method called add children information and this guy right here is not going to change in any way and here we're going to go private let's just move this up might be helpful if you have the code in front of you void and then we're going to go add children information and like i said before this is going to receive a string buffer and what's going to go inside of here well all the information that was up in our old method so we're going to come in here to where it says iterator and the whole way down here where that ends and we're going to cut that out of there come down inside of here again i think this is a good tutorial in regards to just making sure that you know everything that is going on inside of here so it's a review of extracting methods it's a review of a whole bunch of different things so i'm going to give this item info as a name as well some people like doing that some people don't i'm a person that likes doing that and then what are we going to do well we're going to take item info and we're going to make the changes we need here so that'll work and then append like that and then this is going to go right there so that all works and we're not going to need to change anything else with that and then let's come up here and let's look at this add item information receives a string buffer we're going to append that information onto there it's going to cycle through here append that information onto there so that all looks good so then let's get up to add item info and children and that is going to call add item information and add children information see everything is very 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 readable now so then what we're going to need to do is come back up to this guy and instead call this method right here i'm just going to copy that directly get rid of this bang like that and then item info is going to be passed like that now it's very easy to see what's going on here and then down here where the return statement is remember to string does not allow you to send a parameter we're now going to have to spit out item information when this is called and we're going to have to convert it to a string so item info to string right like that file save it and let's check it out boom exactly the same thing so we were able to go in and take that really long method and shrink it down to just three very easy to read lines of code we created a new method that is very readable we know it's going to add item info and item children and what's this do add item info add item children very easy to understand all of this information is just as easy to understand if not more so because we took it out of that giant method now it's only three lines of code and this guy down here is only four lines of code so the code's much more readable much more easy to deal with feel free to leave any questions or comments below I'm gonna be using a lot of this stuff in the next tutorials that are going to come after this otherwise till next time